Hey guys, Al DeMarco here, general manager at DeMarcoSports.com, and this is going to be your Friday video report. I've got a couple of complimentary plays here in college hoops tonight. I'm going to take a look at the Atlantic 10 showdown between Dayton and St. Bonaventure, and then I'm also going to take a look at a Mid-American Conference game between Akron and Toledo. I've got to tell you something, guys. I've done some 7,000 of these video reports over the years. And I've done them from all around the world, from Italy, the Netherlands, United Kingdom, even Paris. I've done them all across the United States. I've done them from my car as I've driven through the cornfields of Iowa. I've done them, God knows from how many hotel rooms. I think Marriott ought to make me an official sponsor, but this is a first. I have never done one from a food court in an airport until today. Uh, today in Columbus, Ohio, just got done uh, chemo treatment number five, five down, one more to go, and my plane is delayed. So I'm sitting here in a very noisy food court. You'll probably hear some announcements coming through as well, but what the hell, I had nothing else to do because I've got three hours to sit around here. And we also have a very loud guy working at the counter at Charlie's Philly Steaks, so if you hear him, He's a big belt. He needs a muzzle, but what the hell? We're going to do it anyway. Um, by the way, before we get going here, just about uh, 40 minutes ago, news came by that Carl Weathers passed away. Quick story about Carl Weathers. So I was doing TV in New York at Sportsnet New York. I did it for about three and a half years up there. And they had kind of a sports entertainment show because it was a 90-minute show. And the segment I was on it was always in the last half hour. So for the first hour, I was always in the green room, usually hanging out with the uh, uh, guys that covered the uh, uh, Giants and the Jets at the time for the New York Daily News, which was the co-sponsor of the show. For the Giants was Ralph uh, Bacchiano, uh, Rich Cimini for the Jets. You probably have seen their work because they've worked for a number of orga other organizations as well. And any other writers at the New York Daily News had uh, coming in as well. And it was just a great time because we talked football and just kind of hung out. That was the best part of the green room. But the other nice thing about the green room is that uh, because it was an entertainment oriented show too, everybody that was anybody that was coming through to promote movies, promote their latest plays, their latest shows would come in too. So everybody always asks me over the years, well, who was your favorite person that you got to meet? I met a ton of athletes. You name them, I met them. Covered boxing for eight, nine years. Met just about every major boxing figure, too. But Carl Weathers was really cool. Carl Weathers came in to promote a movie. So when he comes in, I mean, it was like the king and the queen came in. It was, I've never seen people fawn over an actor like that before. It, it was almost like athlete status. And even that the way they approached him surpassed it. People were calling him Apollo left and right. And everybody wanted his autograph. I mean, from the people at the front desk to the janitors to the makeup people. I mean, it was this huge crowd. I'm just hanging back in the green room. And at one point, it's just me in the green room. So finally, Carl Weathers, after about 25 minutes, makes his way on back. And he sees me. I stick out my hand. He shakes my hand. And he says, great suit. And I'm wearing this incredibly expensive Armani suit. And I'm probably about 35 pounds lighter at the time. And I gotta admit, I was looking good. And me being the smart ass I am, and I said, um, love you in Action Jackson. Because at this point I've heard, everybody's just asking him nonstop about the Rocky movies, Hollow Creed, blah, blah, blah. Action Jackson was this movie that wasn't exactly a big hit that he did with Craig Nelson and uh, Sharon Stone, but I happened to like the movie. So I stick out my hand, and of course, you know, he's breaking my hand, he's, he's shaking, and I said, love the in action, Jackson. <laughs> Carl Weathers gives me that Carl Weathers laugh, and I can't do it, but you know that laugh. <laughs> and he gives me that big smile. And um, I figured if he can compliment me on my Armani suit, I could at least compliment him on my favorite movie. Sat there for about 20 minutes, just me and him just talked. And the amazing thing with Carl Weathers is that I'm like five, nine and a half. He wasn't much bigger than me. And, you know, I always pictured this guy as being this massive guy that you see on the screen. And I mean, yes, he's built, but not nearly as big. But anyway, sad to hear that he passed away. I believe he passed away in his sleep today. He was 76 years old. 
but uh, just a really, really nice guy. Probably of all the people, of the celebrities, non-athlete celebrities I ever met, he was probably the uh, uh, my favorite. Anyway, so let's get to your uh, complimentary plays. Um, listen, uh, today my best bet, actually, I'm going to have only my second Race to part 20 dime release of the entire college basketball season going tonight. And it's the half price play of the day using coupon code. No, not the word half. We're going to do something different today. How about second, the number two N D second. It's the half price play of the day. It's available over on the site. My first one was James Madison, the six and a half point road favorite winning by 15 over old dominion back in December. I love this game. It's what I'm calling it my bounce back low out. It's a team that's coming off a loss. Uh, I think they're going to win by double digits tonight. Uh, easily. So let's talk about the first game. Dayton is a seven point favorite at home uh, at uh, against uh, St. Bonaventure. Um, listen, uh, you know, did Dayton have their, what, uh, 13 game winning streak snapped and loss uh, to Richmond last week on the road? They did 64 to 60, I think was the final score. But um, I just think it was just one of those games. You know, it's not like even Richmond played that well in that game. But it doesn't matter because then they rebounded from that loss to Richmond. Um, now they're back at home. They're 17 and 3 in the season, 10 and 0. This is Dean Dayton that beat St. John's earlier this year, beat Cincinnati earlier this year. They're 10 and 0 at home where they have just dominated. Uh, they've won four in a row at home in this series against St. Bonaventure as well. Uh, expecting their, well, no, not expecting. I looked it up. It's their 55th straight sellout at UD Arena. Um, I'm going to go with them. Uh, the St. Bonaventure team was two and seven in Atlantic 10 conference play on the road last year, one and three so far this year, uh, is St. Bonaventure coming off a nice win against VCU on Tuesday? Yes. Uh, did they have to rally from a 20 point first half deficit? You betcha. They were down 13 and half time too. So when I see something like that, I always question that game. So I like Dayton. Uh, the other game, I don't like it as much, but it's a very interesting showdown in the Mid-American Conference between Toledo and Akron, the two teams that are tied atop the conference. Uh, both teams are 8-1. and one. Akron is a four-point favorite at home. Now, Akron is 2-8 and eight at home in its last 10 in this series. Um, Akron did rebound from a loss at Miami of Ohio. That snapped their seven-game winning streak by crushing Eastern Michigan 77 to 46. Uh, you've got teams that play two different styles of ball. Uh, Toledo leads the MAC in scoring at 79.6 points a game and in field goal percentage, hitting nearly 48% of its shots. But you've got Akron as the top Mid-American Conference team in terms of defense, scoring defense, giving up just a little under 65 points a game. I like Akron to pull off the upset. Yeah, I know they're a four-point favorite here, but I think most people would think that Toledo would be the play here, especially since they're on a 23-1 and conference roll. But if Akron is ever to knock off the Rockets, I think tonight is the night. This is a very good team. Four double-digit scores. I like the Zips. Of the two plays, I would like Dayton a little more. Actually, a lot more than Akron, but I like both of these plays. And again, Dayton is a very strong selection. If I didn't use Dayton, uh, if I didn't use my other play as a razor bar 20 dime play, Dayton would have been a normal top rated 15 dime release. Now, two things before we go. Had somebody write in uh, regarding, uh, asked me two questions a couple days ago, was unable to do a video yesterday because I was flying here to Columbus and it was just a hell of a day. Uh, asked me that if you happen to be in a state where sportsbook gambling is not legal yet, and as you know, it's legal in 38 states, including Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C., uh, mobile sports betting is legal in 30 states. Uh, I think North Carolina is going to come online this year in terms of mobile sports betting. Where do you fight? Where would you go in terms of an offshore sports book? Not as many out there as before, but there are a number of them still. And, you know, he happened to be in California and he had a great line where you can find weed shops every place, but you can't bet legally in California. And listen, California, there's not even actually any active legislation to allow uh, sportsbook betting. Um, the states where you currently don't have it, where uh, in addition to California, Texas, South Carolina, Minnesota, Indiana, Alabama, Utah, Idaho, and Alaska. Uh, in states where currently there is some form or bill in the legislature, 
Georgia, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Hawaii. Um, but listen, the two biggest states, no way of sands or butts, California and Texas. So the one guy said, you know, in California, you can find weed any place, but you can't bet on a game. In Texas, you can have a gun, open carry in public, but you can't bet on the UT Longhorns, the Texas A&M. I don't know. It makes no sense. Any of these states that don't allow sportsbook gambling, it makes no sense to me because you're forcing your your constituents, if you're in the legislature, to give money to a sportsbook that's based in Curacao, Costa Rica, and not paying taxes. Absolutely lunacy. And it's always been that way before the U.S. started wising up and the states did too. I can't give you a recommendation because no one's paying me a commission. No one's paying me uh, to uh, give them leads. And uh, it's, I guess, the you know, in talking to Steve, Steve Budin, who's the guy who really created the entire offshore sports book betting industry many, many years ago, the thing that I can advise you and the word that most uh, is the most important is longevity. The offshore sports books that you can probably trust the most are the ones that have been around the longest. So when you do a search, um, and there's a couple of them, I will just uh, give you a hint. They have the word bet in their name. You know, when you look at these places that have been around since 1995, 1994, 1993, those sports books don't last that long if they don't have good customer service and they haven't paid their players. Now, the Johnny Come Lately books that have only been around two, three, four, five years, why would you want to play there, right? So that's one way you can kind of use a criteria. And then, of course, there's places you can go online and look for reviews of sports books, but everybody has an ax to grind online. So personally, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe any of that. And sites that are giving recommendations, strong endorsements of sports books, they are probably getting a kickback for every customer they refer to a sports book when you click through their link. So again, how valuable are those endorsements anyway? So again, I would look for longevity. Uh, the other question this gentleman posed is the looking at uh, opening lines, the value of games, uh, does that tip you off in terms of getting down on the game? Two ways to look at it from a gambler perspective, from a handicapper's perspective, and maybe even a meld of those two things. To me, when I look at an opening line as a handicapper, right, a guy who's releasing plays, I look at that line and I look at it in terms of anticipating where that line is going to go. Is it a good line or a bad line in terms of where it's going to move? Often you have to do that because I'm handicapping at 3, 4, 5 a.m. in the morning Eastern time. My play is going to be out there and you are not buying it at that point. You're going to come to the site and buy it probably much later in the day and bet it who knows when. So I'm looking at the line and thinking, wow, is that line real? Meaning, is that line going to be the line that you're actually going to bet it on later in the day? At the same time, I'm looking at that line and going, well, it's the first inclination of whether or not I like the game anyway. And I'm projecting where that number is going to move, whether it's going to move up or down. So I'm looking at the value of the line. Now, you as a gambler, that you're not using my services. You're just playing on your own. You have to look at that line and you have to say the same thing to yourself. Is that a good number to bet right this minute or not? And that's why I always said you've got to have at least two or three sports books to compare that number. Because so many of those overnight or first opening lines are weak. And you'll see a variation anywhere up to a point to a point and a half. So you've got a price shop even on the opening number. Personally, I never play the opening number. And I don't think playing the opening number gives you any advantage or not over the long haul. It really doesn't. And anybody that says it does, you know, it's that fish story. Hey, I caught one this big and you never hear about the ones that got away. Uh, the other thing the opening number does in terms of, um, you know, giving you some idea of where to go from a gambling, from a handicapper's perspective, you know how I handicap a college card? I look at the opening numbers. I pick out that bushel of games that I want to start uh, thinking about using. And then for me, um, you know, I've got like 40 subscriptions to different newspapers across the country. But since corporations have been laying off and consolidation has hit the newspapers, I then turn to blogs. And then I go to the school's actually uh, websites. And then if I have seven games, it probably takes me about 20 minutes for each one of those games to handicap every single one of them. 
I have my little bushel of games, and then I wait. I kind of project where the number is going, and that's how I narrow down the card. And that's as a handicapper is how I evaluate it, starting with that opening line. After doing my research, projecting where I think that number is going to go, up or down, before I actually make my final play and relegate the plays I don't like to free pick status like Dayton and Akron tonight. That's where it goes. But in terms of placing a lot of value in that opening number, in terms of actually gambling on it, to me, means nothing. But again, that's me. And I've been doing that for years and years and years. Just a difference of opinion. In baseball, however, I will tell you the opening number there, often you will find dramatic differences because what happens in baseball, often that opening number will be a substantial discount. Early in the morning, especially if you're betting chalks. And, you know, in baseball, 140 is my limit, right? That's generally the highest I will go. So often you will find in baseball guys that are maybe 120, 125 early in the morning. But you'll see that number soar up to 140, 145 easily when the public starts getting down at the books. So there... The early bird catches the worm in terms of getting you a discount if you happen to be on a chart. So it does change by sport. Anyway, I hope I answered your question well. Good luck, everybody. Remember to subscribe to the channel. I will be around Saturday um, after flying all night tonight across the country again. I'll talk to you then. Good luck, everybody.